Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Here you can see I'm flying the Cessna 182, it's back in the air, flying better than ever. Really happy that I can fly it again. I'm going to make a full video about the rebuild and back in the air process for the Cessna 182. But the video today is a very important subject that can get you free performance and you can feel that your airplane flies and performs a lot better. When we are in the flight school we learn about weight and balance but we are never taught about the optimum center of gravity for the airplane and what benefits will it give you. By reading and being an active member of some backcountry flying forums I learned that you need weight on the tail or the rear part of the airplane, the cargo area to get a better center of gravity but it was like a trial and error thing add some weight in the cargo area, remove some weight when I got my P-Pump conversion back and installed it in the airplane the first flight I felt it was very nose heavy I didn't like it I did like the power which is really nice but it felt nose heavy, I was running out of elevator, I didn't like the way the airplane was handling. We added with my mechanic 17 pounds of lead on the tail cone and it was night and day. I could approach very stable like you can see here approaching marble in Idaho and it doesn't sink and you have elevator authority at slow speeds. The Cessna 170 I fly has a 180 horsepower engine which is an upgrade so it's a bit heavier than the Continental that came with the airplane it has a lightweight starter, lightweight propeller but still was nose heavy when I got the airplane it felt nose heavy I added 70 pounds of ballast on the cargo area and that definitely helped the battery is behind the cargo area and I got a field approval to remove it from there and install it three feet behind. Just by doing that, I was able to remove 60 pounds of the ballast. Still, this is a trial and error method. It worked, the airplane felt a lot better than before and I only had to have 10 pounds in the cargo area, which anyway I need which is the survival gear and some tools. Some people might think that adding weight to an airplane is crazy, but if you go to a stall competition, you will see that many of the airplanes add weight on the tail. So the airplane will have the center of gravity or toward the center or the rear, or that will increase performance, especially at slow speeds. What I did not know is that there is actually a method to find the optimum center of gravity. I learned this when I went to Bush Air Advanced Pilot Training and CC Popov taught us how to do this. So instead of me explaining how to do it, I will have CC explain to all of you what is the method to do this. We apply full flap and cut the power. All right. Now, obviously, we have no weight in the back of the aircraft. What's going to happen when we cut the power? And we take and we and we let go of the of the stick or the wheel. It's going to do this. Yeah. So we trim back and we trim back all the way to the stop, and we take our hands off. And a stall does that. We have to come back and land and put weight somewhere in the back of the airplane. Let's just say we just put it in the in the baggage compartment. Okay. If we put 60 pounds or 50 pounds, whatever it is, let's say we put 40 pounds in the baggage compartment, we go back up, we do it again. And we bottom out the trim and we let go and it still drops. Maybe not as fast, we need more weight. So we keep on adding weight at that station until we can take our hands off the controls, off the stick, and the airplane stays in that position. 
Okay, obviously you have to pitch, uh, you have to trim back a little bit, but not, preferably not all the way, okay? Now we've achieved optimum, we've, just, we've determined what the optimum ballast is at that station to give us the optimum center of gravity for the aircraft. So that's yeah. a full, full trim all the way back? Well, and then... preferably not full trim. Okay. Um, but the trainer, you'll see that uh, we can actually turn forward again and get the, the nose down and let go and it'll stay in that position. So that's, that's wow. what I'm saying. Wow. It, it should stay in the, in the, in the attitude that you, that you trimmed it at. So it will just mush us? Well, no, it's coming down. I mean, we're gliding. It's just gliding. We, yeah. We're gliding at a whatever speed, yeah. whatever speed. But it's hands out. It's coming down, out. Yeah. whatever, right it, in the center. It has no But nose. the nose is not falling. You can do one of two things. You can either add additional ballast at that one station. Of gravity. So if you don't have weight in the back of the aircraft, ballast in the weight of the, uh, in the aircraft to create an optimum center of gravity, no matter what you do with that elevator, that's not going to work. The elevator is going to generate drag. So we went up in the Cessna 170 from Bush Air and CC demonstrated how to find the optimum center of gravity the airplane. We have full flaps and then he started to reduce power in his airplane. He did not need it to put full aft trim. Just some of that was enough and you can see how the plane is descending and the nose is not diving. So here it is, no power, full flaps, trim aft, and look at how the nose stays level and the airplane descends but does not go on a dive, which is typically when you have the forward CG. So imagine how nice it is on an airplane where you can start your approach and you start to reduce power and the airplane does not go no down diving gain speed and the pilot has to compensate with trim and elevator so here is through the power we have full flaps and then some trimming aft and you see that the nose does not drop the airplane have the optimum cg This test is not difficult to do. The airplane will not stall. Go to altitude and give it a try. Some airplanes are more nose heavy than others. I know that Cessnas are nose heavy. But this should work with any airplane. Usually a Cessna with two people at front is always nose heavy. Center of gravity is forward. But you need to take into consideration if you are changing the weight, carrying four people with baggage, then your CG will be different. So now I'm trying this on my own Cessna 170. Reduce power, full flaps, and I started to trim back. In my case, I trim back almost all the way to the stop, but look how the airplane is behaving. The airplane starts to descend at the nose level attitude and doesn't dive. If your airplane is at the optimal center of gravity, it will stall at a slower speed. It will take off shorter and shorter it will be a pleasure to fly. But you will have to remember that if you are doing this and then you carry more people or more weight, you might need to remove some of the weight that you put as ballast. As you can see, it's, it can stay like this for a long time. It's descending at about 600 feet per minute at about 55 miles an hour. So what the optimum CG gives you is also the optimum approach speed.
is for a normal landing, not a short landing. This is your optimum approach speed. We can see again from my airplane, the Cessna 170. Uh, from this angle you can see the horizon and you can see the nose relatively to the right. Now I'm reducing speed, added 40 degrees of flaps, which is full flaps for the Cessna 170B. And then we'll start to trim backwards. This shows you an airplane with optimal center of gravity, which makes it a lot more fun to fly and a lot easier to fly. So when you're flying an airplane that is well balanced, has an optimum center of gravity, you are not fighting the airplane with elevator, pulling the elevator all the time or doing trim backwards all the time. So it flies more natural this way. Also, if you are flying in the back country and you want to land short, you want to land slow, you will run out of elevator if the center of gravity is too far forward. You will need to come faster with more power. You can see how slow I'm approaching and the nose doesn't dive and I don't need to add a lot of power either. When I was in Costa Rica last month, my friend has a Cessna, a turbo Cessna 182T so I told him we should go try this to see how is the CG on his airplane. He had a hundred pounds of ballast on the cargo area. So we went up and did the test. And to our surprise, we found that this airplane had the optimal center of gravity already with a hundred pounds of ballast on the cargo area. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you want to go try this in your airplane, I recommend it. And if you want to support my channel, Bad Country 182, please join me on Patreon. You can see in this very video how to join on Patreon. So see you next time and thank you for watching. It is very easy to join Patreon. Go to my YouTube channel, the link is in the description of this video. And navigate uh, below Back Country 182 at the top right. You can click on Patreon and it will take you to the Patreon page where you can select your membership level. It will show you the peers and everything. By becoming a Patreon for Back Country 182, you will not only be helping the YouTube channel, but you can also get direct advice or discount on some aviation products for your airplane or advice or products for your airplane, we can chat and uh, give a call if needed.